Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations at your service to talk about an antenna called the extended double zep. <clears throat> Sometimes it's also referred to as a double extended zep, although I've never really heard of, of a of an extended zep, so I think extended double zep is probably a better term to use for this kind of an antenna. Basically what it is is a double zep or two half waves in phase but extended so that instead of two half waves in phase you end up with two five-eighths wave radiators in phase. The overall length of this antenna is 1.25 wavelength taking the velocity factor of the wire into account. Ideally, the thing should be run all in a straight line to produce the radiation pattern characteristic of the extended double zep. The radiation pattern characteristic of this antenna is similar to that of a half-wave open dipole, except the lobes are a little sharper, and you get pretty close to three decibels of gain with respect to a dipole in the center of the main lobes which run perpendicular to this wire. So the main lobes actually would run in a disc perpendicular to this wire although in the horizontal plane and it's assumed that this is a horizontal span of wire in the horizontal plane or azimuth plane the main lobes would run off in compass directions perpendicular to the compass orientation of the wire itself, that is to say off the sides of the thing. The only difference between an extended double zep, well there are a couple of differences, um, one in terms of the radiation pattern, the extended double zep compared with the ordinary double zep or two half waves in phase has a little bit fatter main lobe, a little wider, a little more compass directions, and it has a little bit more gain, just as a 5 eighths wave vertical antenna is said to have a little bit of gain. So what you tend to get when you have an antenna like this is a current distribution that goes something like this. The voltage maxima at the ends and the voltage maxima and current minima one half wavelength from either end and then one eighth of a wavelength from the center is where these current nodes or voltage loops exist. So what you get here is a reactive impedance. It is not a pure resistance so chances are you're going to want to use an antenna tuner with your transmission line. There would be points along the line I believe where you would see pure resistances. I am not sure exactly what those points are but by experiment you could probably tweak them and find one that might make a reasonably decent match with a one-to-one -one ballon. But I recommend, and most people who use this antenna do it this way, is to use a transmatch or antenna tuner. That way your line can be any length you want. You don't have to trim it, although there may be certain lengths for which the tuner will not be able to cope with the uh, impedance. So you might need to add or take away a little line in certain cases. I recommend a transmatch that can work with true balanced loads, that is to say a transmatch designed to operate into such loads, and a company called Palstar makes one. Just Google on that Palstar and look for their true balanced antenna tuner. I believe they make a 1500 watt tuner for about $700. Kind of kind of pricey but it was it is money well spent then you connect a short length of coaxial cable between the transmatch and your radio just like you would do with any balanced antenna that uses ladder line and I recommend that you use ladder line with the lowest possible loss 
and don't worry about what its characteristic impedance is. Your tuner can worry about all that. What you need to worry about is that you cut this thing for 1.25 wavelengths at the frequency you want to use it at and then you feed it right in the center. You want to have it horizontal and you want to have it be all in a straight line. Um, I remember as I said in the other video at the University of Minnesota back in the 1970s W0YC. Does that look like a zero to you? W0YC, the University of Minnesota Gopher Radio Club station still exists. I don't think they still have this antenna though was an extended double zep for 1.8 megahertz. You can calculate the length there, but it's on the order of 600 feet. A long span of wire indeed for a dormitory uh, portion of a campus in a metropolitan area, but they managed to do that, and it was, was kind of fun to operate on those cold Minnesota winter nights when the atmospheric noise was so low, and that station worked pretty well on 160 meters back in those old days in, a, in that old basement that had this sewer gas smell in it all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever smelled that, but if, if you're prone to migraines, which I was not at that time, you might, uh, you might be able to stand it, <clears throat> especially if the amateur radio operation is so cool. Anyway, that's an extended double zep antenna design. <clears throat> Quite useful on the 1.8, 3.5, and 7 megahertz bands, you might, and I keep forgetting 5 megahertz. Once you get up to 10 megahertz, though, you're probably better off with other types of antennas than this, although these, these antennas will still work even into the VHF and UHF portions of the spectrum. And you can make collinear arrays out of them. Well, technically, this is a two-element collinear array. But, of course, you could make multiple extended double zeps at VHF and stack them vertically and things like that. But that would get into a pretty complicated feed system. I'm not sure I want to go there right now. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. For now, I will say 73 and so long.